So now that the router knows that it needs to join a group, what does it then do? It transitions to the layer three multicast protocols called PIM. But PIM behaves in many different ways depending on the flavor that you choose. So before we actually dig into how the PIM protocol works, we're gonna just talk about the first flavor that you need to understand about multicast routing. This is how multicast routers determine what the actual way to propagate routes throughout the entire topology is and how does it build a multicast tree. So what we're talking about in this video is how dense mode population of multicast routes works. I'll see you there. So we've got layer two down. Now it's time to move into layer three. And how do these devices finally figure it out where some of the receivers are? Because remember, we're talking about one to some or one to many at the end of the day. This is, there's really two flavors about how the tree gets created. Now, I actually read a blog about this recently, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat what I read in the blog because I thought this was very interesting. The whole idea here is we have a source, and it's going to build a tree like, so it's going to look kind of like this at the end of the day. The interesting thing is, you know, this is it, it kind of backwards where the root of the tree is at the bottom, whereas here, this is really the root of the tree, and it's going downwards. Uh, it's just kind of one of the ways to look at it. You can think of it more like a waterfall, as they pointed out in the blog, that the water flows downward or downstream like so. Uh, and that's, that's the idea here, is that when we send this multicast traffic into the environment, it's going to be up to these devices, these routers, to figure out what are the optimal paths for the receivers to reach their destination. You see, we're trying to join, we're trying to get this router here the designated router that connects to a source to communicate to the designated router here where we may have receiver 20 wanting to receive some traffic. So the first flavor that we can deploy is something called a dense mode deployment. The idea here is that the stream is going to be sent into every single link in the topology and it will be on these routers to determine whether or not they need the traffic. If VMX4 here has no host connected to it, therefore it will never ever need this multicast traffic. It's going to be on VMX4 to send a prune request upwards back towards the source and say, I don't want this traffic. Prune my links out of existence on this multicast topology. So let's take a look at it from this perspective here. If the source starts sending in traffic and it and receiver 20 has sent the IGMP join request into VMX1, VMX1 has a star comma G. It knows that it needs the multicast traffic, but it doesn't know where the source is. So using PIM, which we haven't really talked much about, it's gonna send that star comma G throughout the topology, and VMX5 will start pumping the traffic into the topology too. So it has an S comma G. It knows the source, and it knows the group that the source is sending to. So here on VMX2, VMX2 now has a star comma G and an S comma G for the exact same group. However, because we're using dense mode, VMX2 is still going to send it out every single link down to VMX4, VMX3, and over to VMX1. The dense mode deployment on VMX2 3 also says to send the traffic up here, and VMX4 says to send the traffic up here. So the traffic gets flooded absolutely everywhere. Because VMX3 and VMX4 do not need the traffic at all, here we're going to draw these arrows back here, VMX4 is going to start by issuing the prune requests off its links. So we're just going to go ahead and erase these here in this direction, and VMX3 is going to do the same thing here. We're going to prune this link here and this link here. Ah, wait a minute, do you see what we've got going on now? VMX1 has a nearly direct connection all the way to the other designated router. So it's going to send the prune request this way towards VMX2. Now, this is how our multicast topology looks. Because VMX2 doesn't need this request anymore, it sends a prune request this way. And what we have is a now direct path towards from the source to the destination. This is called a source tree because the tree is now created and optimized in order to go directly from the receiver to the source in the most optimal path possible. However, this did come at a cost, didn't it? In order to create the source tree with dense mode, the multicast traffic at some point was sent to every single node in the entire topology. The assumption here was we just assume that every single node wanted the traffic, and it was up to the nodes to prune themselves off of this this list. 
So this is the entire point of dense mode, and this really sets up the biggest term that you need to know, and that's the source tree. The source tree is all about creating the fastest and most optimal path possible from a receiver to a source. This did come at the cost of using dense mode, where we forced all of the links, every single link in the entire topology, to be pruned off if they no longer want this traffic. So this introduces the dense mode version of multicast. In the next nugget, we're going to talk about the other variant of it, the source mode, where maybe not everybody wants it and it's up to them to ask for it. So that's been dense mode and the source tree. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.